morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Kent. I'm Reverend Stephen, your minister. Thank you for joining us as we gather in person and on Zoom. We are a spiritual community that seeks to be diverse and inclusive as we inspire love, work for justice, and grow together in community. I recently found myself in a troubling conversation here at church. A person whose family has a trans child was talking about leaving Ohio because our state is becoming very hostile to trans youth. I was shocked and angry and felt an urgency about leading a service about this issue. Kevin was part of that conversation, so I asked if he would co-lead this service with me. Thank you, Kevin. I invite us now to take a moment to breathe, to be, to come together into this time of community. As we breathe together, let's feel the spirit working in us and among us, and let's invite it to be present and to open our hearts to life and the gift of today as we reflect on the challenges the trans youth in Ohio face and how our faith calls us to create a safe and loving church and world for them and for all people. Come, let us worship together. Uh, this is a song that was made by the campers at Camp Lilac. They're, these are their own words to describe how they feel at camp. And it shows that the trans agenda is that kids just want to sit around the fire and live their normal lives and make friends just like everybody else. I'm a non-binary camper, I am a transgender kid. Let me tell you about camp and the awesome things we did. We made some friends in campfires and a brand new family. Camp Lilac is just the place where I'm safe being me. It's like we are one big family, everyone understands. We all have something in common, we're beautiful and trans. I don't have to explain myself and I don't have to hide. It's open and it's comfortable and fills us all with pride. Here it's normal to express your identity. We have a reason to love ourselves in our community. I'm a non-binary camper, I am a transgender kid. Let me tell you about camp and the awesome things we did. We made some friends in campfires and a brand new family. Camp Lilac is just the place where I'm safe being me. Camp is about learning and loving who you are. It's welcoming and worry-free, and we're setting the bar for kids to come and find themselves out here in the Midwest. We're grateful for our campers, and a counselor said it best. Thanks for being trans, and we really do agree. The trans is normal, fun, and awesome, wonderfully free. I'm a non-binary camper, I am a transgender kid. Let me tell you about camp and the awesome things we did. We made some friends in campfires and a brand new family. Camp Lilac is just the place where I'm safe being me. Camp Lilac is just the place where I'm safe being me. Fierce. That word may conjure up images of something wild or untamed, perhaps even violent, like a fierce storm. 
But in the mid 13th century, the old French word origin, fair or fairs, also meant strong, overwhelming, proud, mighty, great, or impressive. That's what we're talking about today. Fierce love, mighty love, great love, impressive love for children and teens who need it most. Trans kids need to be loved with a fierce love because they are fighting a societal battle that they should not need to fight, much less fight alone. We, you, me, all of us need to advocate both for and with them. Back in the 90s, I learned a lot about educational advocacy as a parent of children with autism. I had not imagined it as a role for myself, but it needed to be done for them. Services simply did not exist to meet their needs. So I became a mama bear, protecting, guiding, and teaching my twin cubs how to navigate a life in a world that is neither easy nor kind toward those who are a bit different. Trans kids need adults who are willing to learn, who are willing to walk the journey with them to help navigate and eliminate the unnecessary and often unlawful obstacles to their wholeness. They need the fierce love of community. They need us. If not us, a welcoming congregation, then who? If not now, then when? It is time to be the mama and papa bears for these vulnerable kiddos who need advocates, support, understanding, lawful protection, quality and equal health care mental health treatment, and most of all, our fierce love. As Unitarian Universalists, we light a flame within a chalice to unite us in worship and to remind us of our ongoing search for the light of truth within and among us. The chalice is also a light to guide us on our shared journey and a reminder that we are all interconnected in the great web of existence of which we are all a beloved part. As Blaze lights our shared chalice, I invite those on Zoom to please light your home chalice. Please join me in the words for our chalice lighting which were adapted from Until All Means All by Erica Hewitt. The chalice, as a symbol of Unitarian Universalism, arose as a sign of promise that anyone who is marginalized will not be forgotten or ignored, especially LGBTQIA plus people because you are whole, beloved, and precious, seen as you are by the holy. As we light our chalice, may it be a symbol of our promise to draw the circle wide, a sign that we will not rest until all means all. Six years ago, we started Justice January for our children. The original idea was to give our religious education teachers a break in January and not have to come out in the cold if they chose to stay home. But since then, it has flourished into this beautiful, uh, this beautiful program that we do and the kids look forward to every year where they choose their justice focus and they work for it, and they work toward it, and they build partnerships throughout the month that last the whole year. Um, some of you already know this, but if you don't, the children chose PFLAG this year to support, and to support children, youth, and families 
um, of the LGBTQIA plus community. And they have been doing the work. We started by educating ourselves, reading stories to each other. I had the children read to each other and then teach each other about what they learned in each book, learning about all sorts of history and uh, what gender identity means and all of these things and how to be a good ally in the community and how to support each other. Then we moved on to letter writing um, to our senators and representatives in Congress. Then we moved on to letter writing to this community um, to ask the board and this church to consider changing the signage of our bathrooms in this building. The children, I am pleased to report, have a meeting with the board of directors next week. Is the 22nd next week? <laughs> so next week to plead their case to talk about the needed change. They also raise money to give back, and that's where they ask you to join them. They ask you to help them in their cause. And you did. You did wonderfully this year. Together, the children and you have raised $430 for PFLAG Akron. So Kim, if you could come on up here real quick. Kim is a representative of PFLAG, who will be joining us today to teach the children all that their money will do in the community and all the ways that we can continue to partner with PFLAG going forward. Um, and I believe some children have a presentation for you, Kim bringing you the money that we raised. We raised $430 for y'all, and they did too, so thank you. <laughs> okay, that was their presentation. <laughs> we lead busy, complex, and challenging lives. It's important to take regular time to care for our spiritual lives. So each week during our time together, we create space for stillness so that we can pray or reflect, think about the things we're grateful for, meditate, or simply be in order to remember who we truly are, to reflect on life, and to reconnect with the sacred mystery that is the very heart of life itself. I invite us now to enter stillness for several minutes. Let's each find that place of silence within us where love lives and calls us into fullness of life. Part of our experience in life is struggle, sorrow, loss. But the burden is easier when we share it in community together. So we take time now to share sorrows, struggles, and losses that are in our hearts. If you're on Zoom and have a sorrow, loss, or struggle to share, please use the chat box. Elaine shares with us that her dear friend Tina's mother died on Monday. Elaine, we hold you in our hearts as you grieve a hard loss. Danny shares with us the sorrow of a childhood a friend dying of COVID. We hold you in our hearts as you grieve a family. Randy shares with us that member Hale Dawes is back in rehab in Talmadge. We send Hale wishes for a full recovery and healing energy and love. Brooke asks that we keep their family in thoughts and prayers. Today would have been my mom's 55th birthday and we miss her dearly. So sorry, Brooke. Diana Watt sends healing energy and love to Deborah Lynn. Paul Curris shares that his mother has cancer and is recovering from surgery and radiation. We're thinking of you and your family, Paul. Kara asks prayers for Uncle Gene, who is in hospice care and in transition. May you all know peace and comfort. We remember all those who are struggling with challenging family dynamics. Invite us now to come together in the spirit 
of prayer with these words by Jess Reynolds. This was written for our LGBTQIA plus community, but I think it's a blessing for all of us. Here you are. Here in this holy space, on this ground that is holy, because you are here. Here you are in flesh and bone, filling up this body that belongs to you alone. Your pumping heart is a wonder because it keeps you alive. Your loving heart is a blessing because it keeps all of us alive. The spirit of love has a home in you. May we all see that love in you and let our hearts become mirrors for the compassion at your core. The spirit of justice has a home in you. May we light our flames from one another until we are all burning brightly, burning out every prejudice we carry in ourselves. Here you are, holy as you are. Blessed be. Our lives have also brought moments of joy, of wonder, and awe this week, moments that have lifted our spirits and reminded us what a gift life is. If you're attending via Zoom, you're welcome to use the chat box to share any joys with us. Julie Soengo says, joy to be on the mend from COVID, feeling much better the last couple days. Yay. We send you healing wishes, Julie. John? I'm supposed to get my brain to dock in around four months. Yay. <laughs> now with gratitude for these and every blessing we receive in life, for the gift of life itself, for the companionship of each other on our shared journey, for the beauty of our world, and for the, all the possibilities this day offers, let's raise our hearts in gladness and together say, Amen.
This reading is entitled, Finding My Fears, and it was written by an anonymous mother for their trans child. My heart is racing, my mouth is dry. I bite my lip, I try not to cry. The pressure is sinking me, my head will soon pop. The criticism, the hate, when will it stop? A headline, opinion, radio debate, another scare story platform of hate. Day after day, another attack, the mindless celebrity, the scientist quack. All spouting distortion, spitting out lies. They don't know the facts, yet pretend to be wise. About surgery, hormones, desistance, trends, they couldn't care less about my child and their friends. There is a durable biological underpinning to gender identity. This isn't a choice, but I feel so alone, I can't find my voice. I see how you stare on the playground each day, eyeing the dress, judging the way that I raise my family it couldn't happen to you with your conforming children. You'd know what to do. If your child cried about gender in bed every night, if your child was depressed, saw no hope in sight, if you held them as they sobbed in your arms, asking you to love them just as they are. The hate almost breaks me, it makes me despair. So many lies, so much distortion, it is all so unfair. I'm so close to crumbling, my head is a spin. I can't let myself sink under, can't let them win. I feel so hopeless, so alone, fragile and weak. If no one will stand up, I need to speak. I need to find courage. It must be somewhere deep. If I don't come up fighting, I'll lie here and weep. But the thing is, now they are happy. I wish you could see. They know who they are. They just want to be left alone to live their life without fears, without pointing fingers and whispers and jeers. You want me to squash them, make them feel small. Tell them there's no space for them in this world at all. But the world is bigger than you can know. There's room for trans children to grow up into adults who will succeed and thrive, who will be happy, thankful to be alive. I see their spirit, their courage, their heart. They need vocal allies, me for a start. They need sturdy defenders stood by their side, telling the world they are perfect. They don't need to hide. So I will stick up for them. Fight the battles to come. I will find my fierce, my strength. Be a mom. Remaining seated, I invite you to join in singing our hymn of affirmation, How Could Anyone? How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? 
How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul? How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul. In recent years, hundreds of anti-trans bills have swept across this country. Over 150 anti-trans bills have been introduced so far in this 2023 legislative season alone. The ACLU is tracking 262 anti-LGBTQ bills in total. Since attempting to outlaw transgender adults using bathrooms was not successful, they have moved on to attacking trans students who do wish to use the bathroom, or to play sports, or to be called the correct names and pronouns. They are attacking teachers and librarians who dare acknowledge the existence of trans people inside school walls. They are attacking parents who support their trans children. They are attacking trans people who are in need of medical care and those in the medical field who dare treat their tr trans patients. When Representative Gary Click, the sponsor of Ohio House Bill 454 says, we just don't know enough about this. And these surgeries have only been done for about eight years. He is continuing a legacy of erasing the history of trans people who have, in fact, been undergoing hormone replacement therapy and gender confirmation surgeries for over 80 years. And of course, trans people have always existed throughout all history and all of humankind in every land, in every clan. On the surface, the people pushing these bills use language to suggest that these measures are intended to protect vulnerable children. However, some of the proposed bans on trans health care would outlaw treatment for those up to age 21 in both Kansas and Mississippi, and up to age 26 in both Oklahoma and South Carolina. Proposed bans on drag shows include events where no children are present. Proposed barriers for trans people to obtain proper ID, which affect us in our jobs and our housing, are clearly directed at adults. Every once in a while, perhaps in an interview, the people who are most active in creating and promoting these bills reveal that underneath these messages, they truly believe that the presence of LGBTQ people is dangerous to society. And because they are a danger to society, therefore we must outlaw the very existence of LGBTQ people with imprisonment, concentration camps, and execution. Some of them have won elections for their commitment to this cause. You might think, but this can never happen here. But it has happened. Those who did not conform to colonize their standards of gender and sexuality were specifically targeted and exterminated in the ongoing genocide of Native people here on Turtle Island. And of course, it happened again in the Holocaust. Some of the arguments have been, there's just not enough research. Stop experimenting on children. And there are only two genders. It's basic science. But what they're actually arguing is that we should reject science. We should reject the research. We should reject the expertise of the American Academy of Pediatricians, the Endocrine Society, the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, American Psychiatric Association, the US Department of Justice, and the World Professional Association for Transgender Health. In any case, the option of surgery is only available to eligible teenagers who are 15 years old or older who have both a supportive family and a family that has means to pursue such a path. Despite the prevailing myths, no surgeries are being done on prepubescent children. No prepubescent children are taking hormone blockers 
or hormone replacement therapy. For trans children, the appropriate steps are thinking about names, pronouns, hairstyles, and clothing, which make them feel good about themselves. No medical transitions of any sort are happening before puberty. And of course, too many families in this country are living paycheck to paycheck without decent health care coverage. They are not able to consider much in the way of medical treatments of any kind for their families. For them, gender confirmation surgeries will never be an option. Proponents of these bills will say that too many people who seek hormone replacement therapy or gender confirmation surgery will later regret their decision, and therefore these treatments are dangerous because so many people will detransition. What they're actually referring to are a very small fraction of people who have felt the need to pause their transition temporarily due to societal, financial, or family pressures. When proponents say, it's just a fad, it's just a trend, what they are really referring to is an exponential growth of young trans people who now feel safe to come out to their parents. We saw that same exponential growth when we decided to stop demonizing left-handed students for the crime of being left-handed. <laughs> when they say, we didn't have all this when I was growing up, not as simply an observation, but as a reason for why trans people today should not have rights, what they mean to say is that they wish we would return to a time when trans people had no rights, a time when trans people lived secret lives in hiding because they were far more likely to be imprisoned or murdered for the crime of being trans than they are today. When they say, they're letting kids identify as cats and they're even putting litter boxes in classrooms. <laughs> what they're actually referring to is teachers in the Jefferson County School District of Columbine, Colorado, who are providing snacks for students with di diabetes as well as wet wipes and litter boxes so that students can go to the bathroom while they are trapped hiding in their classrooms during school shooter lockdown drills. And the one that hurts me the most when they say, just let kids be kids. When they say that, just let kids be kids, what they are really saying is, I don't want kids to be trans. If we truly wish to protect children from harmful, unnecessary surgeries, we ought to end the practice of coercing families into correcting the bodies of intersex children without their consent. If we truly wish to protect vulnerable children from adults who want to manipulate them and their sense of identity, we ought to ban the torture known as conversion therapy. If we are truly opposed to government overreach encroaching upon our private lives and our freedoms and liberties, then we ought to stop any attempts to criminalize medical professionals for following their oaths. The people pushing these bills are the ones who are intending to indoctrinate, to force their views upon the lives of others, and to shove their lifestyle down other people's throats. They are the ones who put our young people in danger, and they are on the wrong side of history. There have always been trans kids. There will always be trans kids. There's nothing wrong with the kids. There's something wrong with the village when the people in the village wish for a world without trans people or trans kids. These trans kids belong here. They are a gift and they will not be erased. And that's because we as a village, as a congregation, will have decided to protect them because we are willing to heal ourselves and to reject these lies we were taught to believe when we were children. But however you feel called and moved to protect the young trans people of our church, they need every single one of us to show up every day with that fierce love. We need to reject that genocidal notion that the inherent dignity and worth of young trans people ought to be denied because they are too young to know their worth and dignity or that trans people are in any way a danger to society. When you hear someone say, they're giving kids sex changes, or it's just a fad, or just let kids be kids, I need you to speak up, because that's what a fierce love for our trans youth calls us to do.
Thank you, Kevin. Very well said. Part of our work as a gathered community is to seek out for the most vulnerable among us, for our trans children, and to work for a better world. Our community exists to do this work because of your generosity, the gifts of your time, your money, and care for each other, and recognizing that we are all interconnected. Thank you. To help others in our community thrive, we give to agencies and organizations in Kent and beyond that serve those in need. February's special offering is for the Portage County chapter of the NAACP. The mission of the NAACP is to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic rights of all persons and to eliminate racial hatred and racial discrimination. And now in the spirit of gratitude for the gift of one another and this community and the abundance that makes generosity possible, we give and receive the offering as a sign of our shared commitment to the life and work of this community and beyond. Will the ushers please come forward? Love's rage and grief when strangers harm and bruise the child love made. They batter with their fists and words, advancing hate's crusade. Love's rage and grief when leaders harm and cast love's own away. While claiming truth and righteousness, they blaspheme when they pray. Love's rage and grief when parents harm and shun the child they raised. On exile from their hearts and home, abandoned and erased. work to seek the outcast hurt afraid to be a refuge and a home to hold the child betrayed love's fierce relentless work to seek the outcast hurt afraid to be a So let me ask you a question. Are you feeling a fierce love? Yes. Are you ready to take that fierce love out into the world? Yes. All right. Then let's bring our time of worship to its close so that we can do that. Would you join me now in the words for extinguishing the chalice? We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. May we carry these in our hearts and minds until we are together again. I invite you to rise and join in singing our closing song, Building a New Way. We are building a new way. <laughs> we are building a new way.
These words are adapted from the Reverend Teresa Soto. Dear trans, non-binary, genderqueer, and gender expansive friends and kins, let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. <laughs> you are not hard to love and respect. Your existence is a blessing. Your pronouns are not a burden or a trial. Your body really and truly belongs to you. Your joy and complexity is beautiful. May we always see you and keep to our shared tasks of healing and getting free. And now blessed by our time together and renewed in a commitment to create a world where trans, non-binary, and gender expansive people are truly welcomed, included, and valued for who you are and the gifts you bring. Let us go forth in joy and hope to continue inspiring love, working for justice, and growing together in beloved community. May it be so. Blessed be. Amen. And I see the fierce love and light in you.